Hello and welcome. This is tutorial number nine. Lesson nine of this Earthmark curve. You can find find this tutorial project FPGA slash TCP. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about the receiver's sub circuit. So for a while, we've been we've designed the different sub circuits of the receiver. So at this point, we are going to combine all of them together. The code you can find it here project fpga.com slash tcp select receiver sub circuit so at this point we are going to see how we we are able to join the different segments of the receiver the receiver counter the receiver state machine the receiver address check the receiver the clc error check and there's some bit of control code here i'll also do that in logic scene so we did the the receiver crc address check the counters the state machine now we're going to do the control code then we join the different segments all of them together to give you the receiver model of this core we did the same for the MIME, the Media Independent Interface, in previous tutorials. So we'll be doing, showing you how this was likewise done. The receiver sub circuit, the model, and hopefully we'll be simulating it to just see a bit on how it really works. So this is what the whole sub circuit looks about. Let's talk about this, with the control model. That is the last part that joins the different receiver sub circuits so in this model we are going to see how we got this this clc hash code that we saw in our last tutorial the clc hash the data clc the mrs d equals d and mrs d equals five these two signals we use them when we were talking about the state machine remember the state machine These are the MRS equals 5 and the MRS equals D. So we use them when we are talking about the state machine. Then we're going to also be talking about the RS data. So this is the RS data. We saw it in our last tutorial how we got this RS data. Enable CLC, initial CLC, RS valid. The broker's bit, multicast bit, RSR form, and RSN form. So all these signal we are going to see how we generated them using this final part control model. The last part control model. So starting from the up, the topmost part. We know the CLC, this does a cyclic redundancy check, which is used for error checking. So you saw how we use them when we in lesson five, the CLC error check check. So and this signal here, CLC hash good. We used it in the last tutorial. I told you I'm going to revisit it, but it's still a little bit unclear to me how the CLC works honestly this CLC I'm going to make take huge time to go through it one more time everything about CLC because the sub circuit have not been able to decipher how it really works it's been very complex actually the CLC itself but the little the little i'll throw a little more light on it if you know more you can kindly send me an inbox too so we could talk about it so the clc hash good this signal obviously you see how we got that from okay i think let me let me simulate it actually i found out that i haven't been simulating these codes so it's quite unfortunate. I'm already in lesson nine and haven't um I've not been simulating the codes. 
so that's very bad I think I'll have to start simulating them I'm trying to add the clock so you see how the clock so let me remove this my stagnant MRS clock and use tick enable uh -huh. so could be seeing what how this how this works how they work so the CLC hash good we used it in in our last tutorial when we were talking about the address check the address check is address check we saw this CLC hash code here so it's used to tell the multicast okay it's used to set the multicast okay so whenever the CLC hash code is one you are able to set the multicast okay so let's see what turns it on here so for you to set the multicast okay by turning the CLC hash code on you have to the byte count has to be in six byte count six and what again you have to be in state zero state data zero remember state data is the state for counting data for counting the actual data is no longer the state preamble is no longer the state SFD and now in the state data that is the state for counting the SFD so whenever you are in state data let's assume we are in state data zero let me turn on the zero and we are we have counted byte count one to until byte count six you can see the CLC as good comes on immediately it turns on instantly then whenever it turns on is able to assess this CLC hash so byte count 6 means that we have re received 6 bytes of our data so and what if we've received 6 bytes of our data that is 6 by 2 that is 12 neighbors because you remember the data comes in in neighbors that is the MRSD comes in in neighbors so if you receive byte count 6 that means 6 bytes is equal to 12 neighbors that is you have received 12 neighbors and that is used to generate 12 neighbors to generate this clc i'll still talk about how it's being formed so it's used to generate this clc and mind you this is the clc hash let me turn this simulation off so we can see what base generates this clc hash so for your tattoo BCLC, let me hide this uh, splitter. So here, this is what makes up the CLC hash. The CLC bit from bit twenty six to the last bit. That's what makes up the CLC hash when you are in state data 0 and byte count 6 is equal and byte count 6 and byte count 6 at that point this multiplexer would would have turned on and enable the CLC to take by 26 to 32 that is a total of 6 bytes from the CLC that is what makes up the CLC hash okay and mind you again if you're in state idle it's reset so let's see let's see let's assume let me make a different bytes for it okay so you can see it's taking the topmost last six bytes from the clc last six bytes and if it's in state idle it should reset if we are in state idle, it should reset. The CLC comes on only when we are in state data 0 and we've counted 6. That is, we've received 6 bytes. 
that is when you are able to calculate the CLC. When you are in state ID, you have not received any data, so you should reset. So if state data is off, we have received the last six bytes of the CLC. If you are in state, sorry, we are, if you are in state ID, you should reset. The state ID means you've not received any database, so it resets in state ID. Whenever you go to state ID, it resets. So the MRSD is the input from the physical layer. The physical layer sends in the input. So let's let's demonstrate and see how this bits. This MRED equals to D and MRSD equals five. So let me get my binary to my hexadecimal to binary converter. So you see. Now, in hexadecimal D, in binary is one one zero one. So while we are clocking and assuming we receive a bit that is one one zero one, you see the MRQSD turns on, and assuming we receive a five. 0101 that is 0101 yeah, MRSD equals 5 comes on so this is the bit we used when we were talking about the state machine this bit the MRS square equals D and the MRSD equals 5 so this is where they were generated these two bits this is where they were generated these two bits were generated here then data CLC Data CLC was used for CLC error check and is a transformation of the MRSD. The MRSD was switched. When you go through the code, you will see how and when it was switched. When you go through the code, okay, at this point, this is it. How the data CLC, how we got the data CLC from the MRSD. So you saw that they were transformed the MRSD 0 becomes the data CLC 3 MRSD 1 becomes data CLC 2 that is the algorithm that was used part of the algorithm that was used in generating the CLC error checker now how did we get our RS data how did we get our RS data okay before we talk about our RS data. Let's see this RS valid. It's already on. It's on here already. So let's see how we got this RS valid. The RS valid comes from this fifth flop here. Then the signal that generated it came from here. This AND gate here. This AND gate here. So this is the signal that gave rise to this RS valid. RS valid means that we have received the first byte of data, no longer the first neighbor. When you receive the first neighbor, you are, the MRSDV is what is, you are going to turn on. When you receive the first neighbor, this is this is what turn, turns on here. The MRSDV is what comes on when you receive the first neighbor. But when you receive the first byte, we are going to turn on the the RS valid. So let's look at this logic here. So it says when is in state data zero. Let me see. When is in state data zero? This is the state data zero is on, and the byte count is no longer zero after the reception of the byte first byte count sorry byte count zero means you've not started counting that is when the byte count is still at zero and the delay clc count is less than three and the delay clc is less than three that is when the byte count is no longer zero means you have counted that is the byte count is now either one two or three and when the delay clc count is less than three when it's less than three that means it should be two or one 
okay you will know that the delay cell count starts from one so one is less than three means is either two one or zero and when you when you when it's in two it means it hasn't counted the first byte it hasn't counted the first byte already because the CLC count counts in neighbors so one is not so this all gates here is saying one is not less than three and when you when you are no longer in byte count equals to zero that means you must have received bytes of data you must have received byte of data so that is what turns on this rs valid here and this the uh, flip flop here means delay by one clock pulse so when you delay it by one clock, clock pulse it means you've received more than one that is you've even received more more neighbors on it so so long as you are in state data zero and you are no longer in byte count equal to zero because this all gate the input this byte count zero is a not there's a not on the edge and also the delay CLC count less than three when delay CLC count less than three is already means you are either in one or zero that is when you are when you are in two it means you have just counted the first neighbor because this CLC starts from one so if you are in two it means you just counted the first neighbor so what it's trying to tell you is that RS valid comes on after you've counted the first byte when you've received the first byte of data it's trying to to verify this RS data it means you've received your first byte of data that is when RS valid turns on So let's now see how we go get our RS data because this is the valid data we received. So how did you get this RS data? We've already talked how they were shifted, how the neighbors were being shifted. So after the shifting, the shifted neighbor comes down here. Let me show you. Comes down here, and this state data. Whenever is any any of the state data it ends itself with the received data so what what the output here the output at this point let me highlight it the output at this point means that you are in either of these state data and you receive the data so it's trying to is going to pass the received data through this AND gate if you are in, in either of these states you are going to pass through here to this place and when you get here if you're in state data zero so that's that so what it does this setting here is just to make sure that we receive only doing we will receive data only doing the state data so whatever is in state preamble state idle state drop any received neighbor any received mrsd is not passed into this our rs data storage so it's going to be dropped at this point this multiplexer is going to set it to zero and it's not going to pass through so this multiplexer is going to block it until it's either in any of the states that and then this one also measure that it receives only on one state the next state is used to assemble it since it comes in four bits at a time so the one state is used to pass in the received byte in through here the next state is used to assemble two neighbors to one so that is basically what happens here then the data comes down to here then after that it's going to move in through here it's going to move in through here and form our rs data i know i didn't do a very nice explanation but i think i understand it very well but i'm trying to 
get a better how to explain it better now but the logic is very simple by the time you go through the code also go through the code you will be able to understand what they did there but it is a very simple very simple logic i understand it but i'm not able to explain it actually explanation is very hard it's just that and remind you the when is setting this to zero is when is moving that receive data up to this multiplexer so when when is down here taking it to zero is up here taking the receive data to be stored the receive data is being stored so i don't think i'll explain more when you look look at it very well it's a very simple logic going on at this point this is how the this, this section is where the this receive data gets lashed and form our rx data that is data being received very simple i, I wish I, I explained it better because i love the idea here is zero and when when it's setting it to zero is taking the data to be stored and at that point when it's zero is lashing it up here also so it's very it's a very nice one and you make sure that that is why your state preamble your state sfd data received during state drop data received during hours about none of them is being stored this is the point where they are being deleted this point make sure that it receives those data only in the state data section so then again let's see how the rs start form and the rs end form bit is being generated because there are two very important bits we are going to use them a lot of places in our letter tutorial the rs start form marks that is used to mark the start of data reception that is what rs start form does rs end form rs start frame sorry rs start frame and rs end frame so they are mark the start of data reception this marks the end of data reception so how are they being set so this AND gate sets them the first criteria for turning them on both of them comes on with this AND gate one is that you have to be what you have to be in state data zero then for this these two condition end of them has to be met one is that we have the or if the delay crc is enabled then the delay crc must be equal to 3 what happens when is equal to 3 that means when the delay crc enabled is, is en when the delay crc is enabled and is equal to 3 it means that you have received the first it means that you have received the first byte that is when you have received the first byte here comes on then you receive the second byte here comes on then on the third byte it's finally the RS start form turns on and if RS start form turns on the next byte means data reception has started so this is if delay CLC enabled you have delay CLC enabled this is what happens when you have delay CLC enabled then this is means when delay CLC is not enabled and your byte count is equal to 1 remember that when if delay CLC is enabled that you are you don't count byte count delay well if delay CLC is enabled byte count doesn't count the counter doesn't count we saw it when we were doing the rs counters but delay CLC already marks that you have started data reception but it means that that you are going to receive more data therefore add extra four bytes to your state data counting so that is what delay crc does delay crc means don't start counting immediately if if your byte count ends at seven wait for seven bytes wait for four bytes first before you start counting therefore you are going to get a total of 11 bytes you are going to receive a total of 11 bytes so that is what delay CLC means. It means don't start CLC, CLC uh, checking already. Wait, count four bytes first 
and if your normal byte count is 7 then you are going to add it without 4 bytes that means you are going to receive a total of 11 bytes of data instead of 7 bytes of data so what this is doing is is saying if it's enabled and you are already counted up to 3 then this is 4th one and then on the 5th one set array start from then this second hand gate says is saying that if that delay CLC is not enabled and your byte count is equal to one, that is when R starts from. So maybe let's demonstrate one. It says when we demonstrate it, if we state data zero, and let me and let's enable it, right? Okay. You can see we didn't enable the delay CLC and we already cut counted by its one, therefore, our start form. Or assuming we enabled it and let's enable it and we've counted to two, and then let's count the third one. Okay, let's count to four. Right, delay CLC count. Okay, is Let's on the third count. See on the third count. So the other start from comes on on the third count. So then we have uh, RS end frame. That is the last part that marks the end of frame reception. So the first criteria is one. You have to be in state data zero. So a lot of things happen in this our first state data zero, and any of these if we conditions are available. Let me see. MLDV data is still valid, and the byte count is greater than two. That is, you are in three, four, and above. And let me see this. So when you go to the code, you see all these things on the code already. So I think with my little explanation and what you are going to see in the code, you'll be able to understand this receiver, this control, receiver control model that does this. That does this. So finally at the end, this is the receiver sub circuit here. This is the receiver sub circuit. So remember, this is the control model we just did now. Then we already did the address check in our last tutorial. We did this address check from our last tutorial. Then, sorry for that. Let me zoom out. So that is it. We did this with our control model. Then we did this address check. Then this is the CLC. And this is the state machine. And then the RS counter. So these five different sub circuits make up the receiver model of the Edmark Core. Thank you. Please kindly subscribe to my channel for wonderful tutorials like this.